you should be able to scan the QR code. Here we go, here. If you would prefer to go along with your mobile phones. However, I will do mainly demonstration in this uh, in this session. So this is really just for me to, to, to feel warm inside when you send me some hearts here in the beginning. I'll keep that up for just a little bit longer. And if anyone is interested in joining, you can do that using the link that is in the and it's actually going to show up in the in the middle as well. So creating your champions quarter in teams. I, I thought to myself when when we are going to create a champions corner quarter in teams, we should probably start with asking the real question here, which is what is up with champions? What kind of piece to this puzzle are they bringing to the table? And why are we always talking and going on and on about champions? And I think to, to be able to answer this question, we should go back to another question uh, or another statement, really, which is this one. The world is changing or for some of you and, and for me as well, I would uh, I would agree with with this. Uh, this statement is incorrect. It's actually actually like this. The world has changed. We are not no longer, you know, in in, in, in a state where we are constantly changing, we we are looking forward towards cloud services and stuff like that. We have already gone into cloud services. We are using cloud services a lot uh, every day, and and many people have been using Microsoft 365 for years now. So we're, we're past that the world is changing. We are actually in in the state where we have changed, and we just have to adapt to whatever has changed, and. Whatever has changed is actually this, the release mountain. I know that many of you have seen this slide before, and that is because, well, I stole it. I stole it from Microsoft some, some years ago, but it perfectly perfectly uh, exemplifies what we're talking about here. Like this is, the, this is the release mountain. So imagine we are releasing Office, uh, Office 2003 maybe, and Every time there's an update, we have to climb these rocks. And this is the, the poor user who has to climb up for the next release up to Office 2007. And then he waits for a while, he uses the same applications for a while, and then he goes over to Office uh, 2010, maybe. Uh, and there are four years between the first and the second release, and there are three years between the second and the third release. So there's a massive amount of new updates coming to him. And what we usually do then is we create a pilot. We put in a lot of people, uh, the pioneers, if you will, that will that will try these features first. They will lead by example, and they will try these uh, uh, these features and functions so that others can learn from it and, and, and be as productive as they are. But there's a massive amount of information to take in. And God forbid we would actually miss an update, which would never happen, right? In which case the release mountain looks like this. And we, oof, I mean, we, we're in big trouble right now. We have skipped an update. We go like from 2003 to 2010. That's seven years worth of updates, seven years worth of new features and functions and new ways that the software is looking. And this is just bad. This is just a, a terrible, terrible uh, way of going at life. And this is what Microsoft saw as well with the cloud services many, many years ago. So the solution to this problem where we skip updates is to remove the entire mountain and exchange that for a nice set of stairs, the evergreen stair case. Now, this brings us to the champions again. And, and the reason for that is because we, we are now back to a new problem instead. As you see, the release cycles are very much smaller on these stairs. So there's really not that much time to create a new pilot over and over and over for each and every little feature that is going out there. Uh, that would just make, not make sense. We would have to do a new pilot every week. So what we do is we gather these people and we call them champions or ambassadors or the ninjas or something cool and we have them sort of like a stationary pilot if you will but stationary pilot sounds super boring so so name them something better so these these pioneers these early adopters they are the the drivers of change within our uh, our environment and in, within our organization 
So we really want to take good care of them. And that is why we want to create a cozy quarter for the champions. And with that, I think it's time we dig into Microsoft Teams and actually look in how you can you know, how you can do this. So going over to this tab, I have my Microsoft Teams environment. Now I do this demo in our, our production environment. So I've created my Teams Fest preparation team, which has so many channels that you won't be able to see the rest of my teams. So just disregard these ones. Now in the bottom, I took the liberty to actually create a team called the Champions Quarters, but that's that's all I've actually done with this. So, so bear with me. You can just create, join or create, uh, join or create a new team and be up to speed with this in like two seconds. First things first. And by the way, we are going to go at this like starting pretty basic and then move over to more and more advanced features and functions as we go. So first things first, you cannot have a team with the default logo. People are not looking at the name. They are not looking looking at uh, at the text here. They are looking at the logo and, and image, uh, images. So first of all, three dots, manage team. You got to change your channel. Uh, so sorry, picture. So choose something that is simple and clean, something that people will tend to remember. In my case, I'm using this logo, which is kind of like a like a champion's status icon. And that's so, so much easier to, to find for our champions. Next thing up, we don't just want to have the general, no, sorry, the general channel. We want to have a couple of ones. We want to have one that's called news. And this should be automatically shown in the list for everyone. I, I would then prefer to, or sorry, I would then create two more one called continuous learning and i'm actually going to copy paste that name because i cannot spell that for for sure so continuous improvement and this could be continuous learning or just constant learning or just learning or improvement and the idea here is to really gather everything within the champions quarters that has to do with improvement or learning that we already have while we're in in the news section we will go more for like Okay, so they just released this on Ignite, or they just told us this new feature and function on, on Teams Fest, whereas uh, the continuous improvement can be something more about, uh, I'm using forms in this extent, and that's a feature that has already been there for a long time, but now we're actually using it, and this is our, uh, our experience with it. And we're going to go a bit more into details on the different channels. But first of all, I need to create one more, and this is perhaps the most important one fun stuff so every every team in my opinion should have fun stuff in there uh, because well people want to have fun right and especially if you are in the champions quarter if you look at the pilot group they would be gathered and they would would be given a task they would do that task and then they would move on to the next thing that's it but in here we want to keep these people engaged for for long periods of time. We want them to to, to come back into this team and and to drive um, uh, drive the change for their peers. And to do that, and to actually go into this team to see what's what's new or look into the continuous improvement uh, channel, you may want to lure them, if you will, with the fun stuff channel. Now, if we go to the news, there is something called an a connection here or an RSS feed. So we can actually automate some of this stuff. On the news uh, channel, click on the three dots, click on the connectors, and I'm gonna go with the RSS feed, which is up here on the top. I'll add that to the team and I'll add that as like that. And now since I've added RSS feeds to my team, I can now configure an RSS feed. Since I am based in Sweden, I will add two of these connectors uh, that has to do with well, Swedish information, like the roadmap in Swedish. Microsoft roadmap. And we don't need to digest this on a six hour basis. It's fine if we get that we this way weekly. And clicking save will not only save this and, and start to implement uh, or import this um, these news into the team like from the next week, but it will actually go through whatever we've missed so far and put together the, uh, the RSS feed for that and put that into the channel as well. So we'll cl click configure again. This time we'll just go with MS News and this link, both of them I will, I will send out after this session. 
and this is also something that we can look at on a weekly basis. So this will, on a weekly basis, send information to our team. I can just click this down, down like this. So we get a gathered, gathered piece of information on what's what's new out there in the world. And it's important here that I, I take a moment and just emphasize that you don't just automate things. Okay, so this is a this is a perfect way to get stuff done that you don't have to do manually, but there is a premium currency, which is time and effort. So if you just put this in at one time and then you leave it be, and that's all there is in the news channel, then people are not going to go into the news channel. What you need to do is actually schedule some time and go into and reply on some of these to, to bring people in, to show them that you are actually putting in time and effort in reading some of these and maybe pushing them towards some of your champions and, and asking them like, okay, maybe the outlook for iOS experience thing that, that just happened here, uh, maybe that's something for a particular champion uh, to, to read into. You should mention that person and bring them into the discussion. So time and effort, that's super important. All right, if we go to continuous improvement here, I usually put in a new tab for the Teams demo site and super easy. Click on new tab, add a website. We can name this Teams demo and you use this link, teamsdemo.office.com. And for, well, we, we could post this to the channel, but people will find it anyway. And this is this is a interactive guide for Microsoft Teams, which is super handy for all your champions, should be easily available for them. And well, it, it it's actually very good for them to, to go through this guide as well, not only to, to have it available and send it to other people. So, when you click on this one, you first chose if you are going into your desktop mode or your mobile mode. If we go with desk desktop, it will actually go through every menu of Teams and give us the basics. So we can click next and next and next, and it will it will be a bit interactive. So it will show like when things happen, and we can click on stuff ourselves as well uh, to actually create new Teams, for example. So this is a super useful interactive um, demonstration that not only your champions should go through but they should also have easily available to send out to their peers because well their peers may not be as familiar with teams as they are themselves in the general section i would usually put in another tab for user voice so again a website we'll call this one user voice teams and put in this link that goes to microsoftteams.uservoice.com and the reason for this is because you are gathering the organization, organization's pioneers, they're the early adop uh, adopters, and Microsoft is listening to user voice in terms of what should we implement, what should we do next. And let's say you have a hundred people in your champions quarters. This is a perfect place for for you to really drive change towards Microsoft and have them change their ways and priorities on what what is important to you guys. So if you want something to happen within Teams then this is a perfect spot for you to, to ask your champions to go in and vote for you so that you will have some, some actual effects on what Microsoft is producing. So, uh, and besides, it's, it's a great way to really show that you can, uh, you can influence what is going to be updated in Microsoft Teams. Now, let's go to the Files tab and open SharePoint in the background because this is something that I that I find is usually forgotten. Like there is actually a SharePoint team site behind every Teams, which most people know about, but very few people do anything about. So just some quick fixes here. Let's go to, to the home tab and let's begin with, well, sorry, I did, I did remove some stuff uh, here in the bottom before, but you click edit and you just change this a bit to your preferences, maybe add some, some quick links, maybe again, adding the same link as we did before. That goes to Microsoft Teams demo. Again, easily accessible. So we'll just go with that and click on republish. And now we have a set of, of link um, collections up here in the right corner for your champions to, to use. And don't 
necessarily have this just to be informative Microsoft Teams links. You, you could just use uh, your favorite restaurant menus or, or something that, that your champions are gathered around, something fun that will bring them to this site. It looks a bit boring though, so let's go to the cogwheel up here and change the look, which lo and behold, changes the look of the SharePoint site. I'm gonna go with a theme that is dark blue down here the, in, in the bottom. And for the header on the change look again and the header, I will go with the background that is filled like this and then save. So for me, this, whoops, for me, this looks better because I usually use the, the dark themes on pretty much everything on Teams as well. So for me, this looks a, little, a bit better and mainly it looks different from other SharePoint sites that I'm, I'm using. So again, you want to, you want your champions to actually be in here, make it look a bit, a bit different than everything else that they are using, make it stand out. And one thing that I almost never see anyone doing, which is a shame, is create at least one news up here or one new post. You just click news post here. Uh, I'm going to go with visual and we are we are getting to the reason why I'm creating a post for this. But let's say we're creating a visual post and create page and I go I'll go down here and copy some text. We'll name this. Who are we as champions? And down here we'll change this one out. To this informative text, why uh, why do we need champs? Uh, the world has changed for the better, and we need to early adopt. Uh, we'll need early adopting champions in our organization that will help drive our potential in an evergreen world, and some uh, information about the qualifications. And then we'll end this with not this text, but rather, do you know some? Do you know someone who is suitable for our champions program? Please invite them to the team. I don't like this picture up here, so I'm going to change that. Clicking on this button up here and going to stack images so that I have a, a variety of images to choose from and I'm going to go with I, th I thought I thought uh, here it is I thought I thought this the other day this party image because I like the way the, they hold their hands up like a heart and we'll focus on that one going down this one is green so I'm, I'm I'll keep that I'll keep the leaves but down here we don't need to have these sections sex, <laughs> sections so just remove them like that and post the news. So this was done in what, like one minute or let's say two maybe. And our homepage is now looking a little bit different. Well, it shouldn't be looking like this, but it should have the post on the first page. And that also makes it look a bit different to any other SharePoint uh, site that you would usually go into. Let's see if, if it can load up and can see what it looks like. There we go. So instead of having that default image, we now have who are we as champions as the top new news uh, article, and we don't actually have to have any more in there. That's enough. Now the reason, the re reason number two why we created this is that if we go back to the Teams team again, and we go to the general channel, you can add a tab, and from here you can choose something from SharePoint, which is down here, and. This will give us this one. Who are we as champions that I created less than a minute ago? And if I save this one, it will be a nice looking tab for our champions team with instructions on who are we as champions and why are we here? What do we do? So feel free to fill in this with, with more information, of course, but have this kind of like a start page or like an, like an informative page that your champions can go to and, and look for answers when it comes uh, in terms of what are we expecting from you in our organization and what are what is the value for you to be a champion for us uh, or with us here now let's go to let's see where i were exactly let's go to the continuous improvement um, uh, page now i did mention that we would go back to this and i i think again there's a premium in spending your time and effort. So you should definitely do some manual labor here, but you don't have to do that all the way. And uh, we can actually automate some of the Teams tips that would show up in this by going back to SharePoint like this, go to the Home tab over here and click on New. 
And from here, you can create a list. Now, you, you could, yeah, you can definitely create this in Microsoft list as well, but let's create a list and we want this to be shown in the site navigation. Now, I have gone ahead and actually created this before, which is called the tips in Teams. And the only thing that I've done is I've clicked add column. I've added a multiple lines of text and call it, call it description. And I've added a date and time, which I called publish date. And in this, we are now able to post some tips that we can schedule, like tip of uh, teams tip of the day, sort your teams. And then we just have to describe what that means. Like so, did you know that you can actually sort your teams in the list on the left side? Just grab them and move, uh, move them around. Have your best teams on top. Now, I want this one to be published uh, today. And then we'll create a new one in, in um, advance here. So next one is team of the tip, register for Teams Fest, which will hopefully be in April again. So we'll put in some information on, on that, like how you can register. And we want this to be published maybe, uh, let's say February on the 25th maybe. And then we'll exit quick editing. So now we have a list of hints and tips and anything really that we would like to automate, uh, automatically get uh, into our teams. So from here, we'll go to flow, flow.microsoft.com. And you can create a new flow from create. Now you, you just uh, chose to, to create a scheduled flow that will make it, or a, sorry, a recurring flow. And that will give you this trigger. Now I've set my trigger to run on every Monday to, uh, to Friday at 9 a.m. like this. And what it does is it goes and get items. This list contains, of it uh, contains items. So it will gather all of those rows from that list. But here's the magic. Under advanced options, I filter the query for the publish date, which is this one over here published date to only be equal to the format date time of UTC now, which is well, today. So, so every day this flow will run or every weekday at least. And if, uh, if a certain row has the same date as it is today, then that will be that will be gathered from this list and we will move on to the next step, which is publishing this information in our team. So, Next step, Microsoft Teams. And then you'll have to look for post a message version three, like this. We have to just select champions quarters, like this. And we want to have this in our continuous improvement channel. Whatever we put into the title of the list is going here. And when I click this, it's actually going to make a for, for each or for all. Uh, loop for us since well there could be multiple options in the in the list so if you put in more tips than one for the same date then well all of those uh, rows will be published as as their own selective messages so apply to each and we'll have to go back here and we'll click this one and just put in the description and then we'll save like that now if we want to see if this works we go up to test like this and we'll perform the trigger action ourselves and run the flow. Hopefully it will gather uh, today's, today's message. As we can see here, it found something. Did you know that you can actually sort your list, teams in list? And if we go back to continuous improvement and post, there is now a tip of the day. So now we can schedule teams tips so that well, we're not just overwhelming our users with everything we know about Microsoft Teams. We can we can put that down into the list at one time. We can sit down for like two hours and just fill in this list with everything that we can come up with in terms of what you should know as a champion. And then we can just schedule it to be published at a later date, maybe twice a week. So that way you can have you can have. A, your team alive and well and, and have some new information pop up there every time, even if you're sick. But again, there's a premium to putting in time and effort. So do go in here and, put, and, and, and answer with some print screens or some more information or, or mention someone that you think is especially um, helped by this message. That way, 
it will be uh, well more appreciated really now for the for the last thing uh, we have the fun stuff here and i'm going to go back to flow and just give you a tip of what you can do with with this as well if we go back to flows right here i have another one called the name names day or teams names day and if i go to edit this one it will also recur at 9 a.m i like the 9 a.m <laughs> recurrence flow and what this will do is it will list the group members of the team now you have to go with office 365 groups and list them group members because you can list the members of the team and then you will list a record or a SharePoint list or an Excel file or wherever you ha have a list of, of names days and their specific date on, you know, <laughs> who has the names day on a specific date. So let's say that we have Victor and Victoria on today and, and we have a Victoria in our team. So what this will do is we'll list all the group members. It will list all the names days, except we do the same magic here. The date for my list, which is in CDS and is called CRDD4 uh, underscore date, which could be just the name date in an Excel file or a SharePoint list, should be equal to today, the same formula as before. And I will send this uh, formula out later so that you can just copy paste it. Now we'll have the, uh, the current name states, which is Victor and Victoria for, for our example. And we'll go into apply to each and we'll filter the array here to just filter out the names that uh, are from, from the team and is consistent with whoever has the names day. So first it will go through the name Victor and it will match anyone named Victor in our team, which is none. So it will just well, not go through to the apply to, to each four step here. But then it will go through every name, every given name, which is the first name of everyone in the team. And it will match those two uh, to Victoria, and we have a Victoria in our team in this uh, in this contoso example, and that means that Victoria will actually be moved over here. The rest will not, and for her specifically, we will get the at mention token for that user, and finally we will post a message where we mention her by name, saying Happy Names Day to you, uh, our our fellow champion. The great thing about this example here is that you can add new champions into your team and this will dynamically update since well if they have if you now have an, a, a, a champion called something whose name stays coming up then they will be filtered out and if you don't we, you, you don't get an extra message in your team so that's also something that should go into the fun stuff where you can congratulate other people on their names day again doing some things with automation so you don't have to remember all of this, but you should also t put in some time and effort into, uh, you know, giving your people your time and effort. That way they will uh, hopefully provide some of their time and effort back to you. So going into this one again and resuming our session, like so, we have some key takeaways from the session. Why do we even need the champions? Well, they are the pioneers, they are the early adopters, and we should really treat them as champions. In terms of channels, start with a few ones. I have I have champions programs with, with 200 champions in them, and we still only have like four channels. So start small, and when you feel like we're outgrowing these channels and, and everyone is discussing this specific topic, then you create a new channel for those sort of, uh, sort of things. Uh, in, in some cases, I've created stuff like technical details or problems or requests, uh, since that is something that most people are discussing in the general channel, and we want to move that topic out of there. But we do that when we see that we have an actual need for it and not just in the beginning for, uh, where we hope that <laughs> this channel will be used for something. And every team and especially the champions quarter should have a fun channel and do go in there and post some some gift pictures tell them about your weekend or that if you if you found something funny on your way to work uh, that that's the sort of stuff that goes in there to really have people want to go into your team not just because they have to go into the team and, and find you uh, valuable information use the rss feeds but make sure you spend actual time and com time coming uh, on them I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Time and effort is a premium currency. 
remind your users of the tabs. Uh, we put in a tab for the user voice and we put in another for the team's demo. Now, you, uh, by reminding your users, not only do they you know, be reminded that this actually exists and they can use it, but you also get, a, get some feedback on this. So if no one seems to be using your tab team's demo, maybe you should remove it. Maybe you should clean that out and, and make space for something else instead. So this is a, this is a real live, live, live team over, over time. So you should just you know, clean it up <laughs> from, from time to another. And don't forget the SharePoint site behind your team. You can, as we proved here, uh, easily create a new news post or article and have that as a beautiful page in your team. Put some color on stuff. Every, everyone wants to have some fun once in a while and mix automation with putting in actual time because your time is a premium currency. So this, I would say, is how you get started with creating your champions quarters in Microsoft Teams. And if I just find my clicker, I can go here in which you uh, in uh, where you can rate the session or send some applauding smileys or, or hearts and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Brilliant, a, a fantastic session. Um, really, really good uh, and some great tips and insights there into the use of Teams. Um, bits in particular I love was the, the RSS feed and um, the, the automation of the tips of the day. I've never thought about doing the automation around that, so that's fantastic. <laughs> I love that part. Um, uh, there was a couple of, of um, parts in the chat where people were saying, would you be able to share um, the templates of the, the flows and such like that or, or yep, screenshots? Sure, sure. I, I can do that. Brilliant, that's great. Um, does anyone else have any questions at all? Um, if you do, please use the, the raise hand feature um, to, to raise your hand and then I can um, enable it so you can come onto mic or post your, your message into the chat if, if you do have a message at all or a question. Seems a regular occurrence for the questions. Uh, everyone seems a bit quiet today on that front. <laughs> I, I think it's good because the way you explain things uh, and so on, it was just a, a fantastic insight into that that journey of why the champions and then um, actually implementing it and using it to fit the tools we have in teams that, that don't always come to mind with some people. So really, really good. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, there are a lot of things that we're just kind of passing by or missing out on, which is super simple. Uh, like, for example, the who are we as champions? Uh, I, I've seen people use uh, PowerPoint presentations or Word templates or a PDF file, and then you put that up as a tab, which is also fully functional. But but in my opinion, this just looks more beautiful. Brilliant. And even better if you go with the right uh, or the correct theme here, of course. There we go. <laughs> Since I chose the, the dark theme for my SharePoint site. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Okay, so we've got a question here saying, do you always have champions program for only teams or would you also include knowledge on the whole of the Microsoft 365 platform? Yeah, I, I usually go with the whole of Microsoft platform. I, I don't just, just have it for Microsoft Teams, but I have the champions quarters in Microsoft Teams. And to be honest, most of the things kind of expands from Microsoft Teams and on to other things. Like you, you want your champions to use Microsoft Lists, for example, when, when that came out and when that is new. So Microsoft Teams is a great way for you to provide information for your champions on what Microsoft Lists is and just create a tab of, of lists and, and tell them to go in and try that. But, but I would definitely go with, uh, you should have a, champ, a champions group that to cover everything within Microsoft Cloud Services, or at least Microsoft 365 Cloud Services. They don't necessarily have to be champions on, uh, on Azure. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of as well. So um, I think it's Sarah has said, where will the, the templates be available? Um, would you post that on your social media for people to see or? Yeah, I can I can post that on, on Twitter and I can actually I can put that into the uh, presentation that will be shared afterwards. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yep, so, so the presentations are available after this session, um, so, so you will be able to, to get your hands on that as well. 
Um, and then we've got another question as well saying, do you have any engagement measures for champions? And if so, which? Uh, well, I would usually go into the admin center where you have the usage reports. And then I usually compare my champions to, you know, like the average user or, or what, uh, or, or maybe thresholds in my way like you, my champions should at least have this amount of, of teams meetings per month or they should at least be using these and the, uh, those functions or maybe they should use email a bit less than they did before so you, you'll find all of those kind of metrics in the uh, admin center uh, or well, i've also built a power re power bi report on uh, usage metrics and then you can uh, uh, always you can always uh, activate the Microsoft usage adoption template <laughs> report, which is in Power BI as well. Uh, that will also show you like the, the, the usage on, on your whole organization, and then you just compare your champions to the rest of the organization. Uh, another, th another, another thing that I usually go into details on in terms of measuring my team is if you go here to the manage team, you always have the analytics uh, tab. And this shows you that your team is alive and well. Uh, how much action is actually going on here? How many many meetings do you have? How many uh, people are chatting and doing mentions in your team? So I try to keep this up. And from time to another, I just take a print screen of this and post it into the general uh, channel of my of my champions team to kind of spore people into you know we should have more usage. Uh, mention people a bit more. Like uh, you 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 use this feature or function to do that. Uh, or uh, last month we had 150 active users on the same day. Let's see if we can beat that to the next uh, to the next um, uh, month. Brilliant. So you have a lot of metrics in here already in the beginning. Fantastic. Um, we've got a couple more questions as well. So yeah, sure. um, no, that's fine. That <laughs> we've got time, so it's perfect. Uh, we've got a question that's saying, what's the number one quality that you find that makes a good champion? Uh, the number one quality I'd say is your willingness to learn and share your information because if you don't have both of them, I mean, let's say you want to share everything, but you don't know anything, then maybe you're not that great of a champion if you don't want, if you're not interested in learning the new things. And if you're, uh, if you're eager to learn everything, but you're never into sharing any of it, then you're also a not that great champion, but it doesn't have that much to do with like your technical skills or uh, or, or how much time you're spending reading blog posts online or, or that, but more like how you how much you engage. Basically, that's the number one skill I'd say in, in both ways, like engage into learning things and engage with your peers to explain what you have learned so that other can reach their potential. Um, and we've got another question as well saying, um, do you treat the champions as the owners um, for choices of creating of teams? So, so is it your um, champion users that are the people that create teams on behalf of your other users? Uh, no, I would usually have everyone being able to create their own teams because, well, if you don't, if you're unable to do that, I, I think you're missing out on a lot of creativity uh, and that's going to be well, people are going to solve this either way. They may create a new channel within a team, something that should maybe have been a team instead, but it's it's easier. Um, so, so, so no, I would usually have all my users being able to create their own teams. Brilliant. Yeah, there is that big discussion isn't there around that of who yeah. should be allowed to create teams <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Uh, there's it's pros and cons of both ways on there, uh, and I definitely I know. agree around that creativity point of having everyone to be able to create teams, but but we've got to think about the, the flip side as well. But it's one yeah, of those know, discussions that, that go on for, for a long time, but you're exactly right. Um, you, it, it's enabling users to, to, to use the platform um, yep. rather than restricting them. Um, I mainly work with adoption. So, I mean, from my point of view, the technical stuff and the governance stuff, it's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the user side. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, does anyone else have any um, other questions at all? Um, okay, so we've got one coming then saying some of your examples, um, like the tip of the day, mm -hmm. would be useful for other users outside of a champions program. Um, so have yep. you got any experience of also publishing this to all users across the organization? Um, I, I don't have an experience with it, but it's as easy as just going into your flow and 
decide which team it's going to be sent to. And if, if we go like this, uh, you can just select a different team up here instead of the champions quarters. And I do have another example of where, where I had multiple uh, champions quarters, uh, well, divided within the same organization. And what I did then uh, was I created this one first, and then I had another flow that was triggered by a new message in Teams being sent with uh, the beginning of it saying Teams tip of the day. And whenever that happened, it took that Teams message and posted it to other teams as well. So I kind of, well, I, I could have done it from the source, but I, I just went with that one instead. Brilliant. But that's for automation. Uh, uh, if you if you do want to publish things to multiple teams, there is also the built-in feature, but then you'd, you'd have to do it manually. So when you click on the format uh, format message down here, you can post to multiple channels on this button here. So that is something that I that I usually do in terms of sending out news or uh, or maybe if I have, let's say I'm I'm part of four teams and they don't have a picture i'm i'm kind of allergic to having teams that doesn't have a an icon so then i would send out multiple messages into the general channel of all of those teams just explaining how you set up a picture great great um we've got another question as well saying um we've got quite a few questions coming in um all right. so, so do you limit um the champions in the champions team um, regarding what they can do, so creating tabs, um, adding channels, creating posts to all channels. Do you lock it down in any way? No, I usually don't. And yeah, that has come back and bite, uh, bitten me a few times. But I, I am a firm believer that if you, if you open up these gates and allow people to try and test, and they feel comfortable that they're not getting, you know, like, like we, we don't slap them on the on the wrist when they do something wrong, then they will uh, have the, the, the courage to try things. And that's one of the most important uh, things that I want my champions to, well, abilities to have or, or uh, skills to have. So, so no, I would usually just let everyone do everything, but ensure if, if we have like 400 champions in the team and I, and I sense that a channel tends to be deleted every other day, then yeah, th then I then I lock it down. But I don't do that beforehand. I usually wait and see if it is if it is an actual problem, and then I do something about it. And I have actually had champions who, who have deleted a channel for the entire team, and another champion went in and restored it, and they learned something on, on that day as well. So nothing bad that doesn't bring something good. Brilliant. Okay, we've got one other question as well around, um, do you ever find it hard or have problems with appointing champions within a business? Um, th their experience yeah. is that, that most people tend to say they don't have time to do it. Yeah, I know. And uh, and I agree with you uh, on that one. It, it is usually hard and it it depends a lot on how you, how you explain this, I'd say. Uh, I usually work with a very simple recipe, which is inspiration first and instructions later. And I feel like many people, they, they go out and instruct people first, like we have a champions team. Uh, it consists of these kind of people and we do these things. Do you want to join? And that doesn't really sound super thrilling, <laughs> but if you instead go in and like, and like, okay, so we're gathering a team of pioneers of the early adopters, the best of the best, we're, we're uh, putting together a team, like kind of like the MVP uh, community for Microsoft, like, uh, you will be shared information before anyone else. You will be have ac uh, having access to things that other, other people haven't. And uh, in, in this terms as well, put some premium on it. Don't just put in like the free stuff here. You can have a picture. Yeah, I can find a picture on, online as well. Maybe have an internal event, like a lunch and learn event or a webinar that is only open to you who are a champion, but that is valuable you know, to you as champions. Or have a, a, a meetup where you have free coffee and, and uh, snacks that usually <laughs> brings people together and it's a bit harder now in, in COVID times but I, I would say that's yeah that, that's a general problem for for most to find your champions and to inspire them to actually go the extra mile here and I think again one of the most important things you can do is put down your own time and effort if you want others to do the same thing. Brilliant. Fantastic yeah I mean um it, myself as well with 
with then, then the champions network and you're exactly right you need to give that buzz yeah. and that like um what's in it for them type of thing yeah. isn't it um exactly. and, and make them feel valued as a champion rather than look like um the, the person said there is people think it's extra work and they don't have time for it it's giving them that encouragement isn't it to, to say well, yeah, wow, exactly. this is going to benefit you in the long run i mean all the information is out there so so it's not about instructions really it's not about well, I didn't know that. It's more like, why should I know that? And and that's, I think, is our job as um, the champions quartermasters, if you will, <laughs> to to inspire our champions to want to actually read uh, all these news and, and get more information or try another feature just to see what happens. Brilliant. Thank you. It's been, it's been a really, really good. I've, been, <laughs> I've loved this session. It's been brilliant. Um, the, 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 the presentation, but also the questions coming in, the answers you've been get, you've given there have been fantastic. Um, so I've really enjoyed this session, uh, and I'm sure everyone else um, would agree with me. I have posted a feedback link into the chat. Um, I will just post post that in again for, for anyone who, who hasn't left any feedback. Uh, it'd be great to to get feedback a, a, on the sessions throughout the day. Um, yep. But I just want to say thank you very much for for sharing that great knowledge you've got around this area and the examples and everything like that. It, it, you've got a true passion for this, <laughs> and it, it, it's great. It's thank great to, to hear it. Um, so thank you very much from from me, and um, thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, really, really good session. Uh, and I will, uh, and I, I just uh, just have to mention this. I have uploaded already this uh, slide set, but I will remove that one and I will add some slides on the end with some documentations on how you can create the flows yourself and, and the, the lists. So uh, I, will, I will upload it again this afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That'd be brilliant. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Great stuff. Well, thank you very much for, for, for today and joining. Um, that's a really good session. Um, if you did want to carry on conversations with anyone, there there is the lounge um, you can go to. I don't, um, I will post the link in for the lounge into the chat as well if anyone did want to continue conversations and so on around this. Um, but I can see the thumbs up, the stars coming in, so, so I'm sure everyone definitely enjoyed this one. Uh, so so <laughs> thank, thank you so very much, much everyone, um, for, for joining today. All right. Have a good one. Have a good Teams Fest. Thank Bye you. Bye, everyone.